One, increased use of violence for political ends. Two, ineffectuality of police methods in combating violence. Gee, I can't quite read your writing, would you? Uh... A. Social illiteracy amongst most police constables. B. Use of violence by the police themselves. C. Look, is this absolutely necessary? C. Low level of intelligence of the average policeman. You're inferring we're all thick, aren't you? No, no, I'm implying they're all thick. You're inferring from that. Mr. Wilson, well, did you or did you not at the weekend brutally murder a defenseless woman and stick her body down that hole? Certainly not. Well, that's exactly what I expected you to say. Well, even more pleasurable is the fact that after the disaster of their first movie, Morons from Outer Space, Griff Reese Jones and Mel Smith have at last found a vehicle ideally suited to their individual talents. Mr. Jones has the rubber face and understated delivery of the true clown, and Mel Smith is very funny indeed as the dogged, dim-witted bully of a cop. The director, Michael Tuckner, keeps everything moving briskly along with nice comic timing, and all in all, what can I tell you? Wilt is great fun. And that's about it for tonight. I'll be back at the same time next week. But to round things off for now, I'll leave you with a clip from another comedy called I'm Gonna Get You, Sucker. You may remember the so-called black exploitation movies of the 1970s. Shaft, Superfly, Cleopatra Jones, that sort of thing. Well, this is a send-up of those. Till next Tuesday night, goodbye. You wanna get out of the car? What's the problem, officer? Just step out of the car. Ooh. This door is ajar. Get your hands on the hood. Please close the door. Ooh. Your door Ooh. is ajar. Look what we got here. I said close the Go, door, huh? shithead. So you want to try and set me up, huh? Everybody was... against Kung Fu Joe, Master of Karate, Kung Fu, Jiu Jitsu, and all other shit you ain't never heard of. <laughs> in our next program, we have New York stories with contributions from Woody Allen, Francis Coppola, and Martin Scorsese. And Dennis Quaid plays Jerry Lee Lewis in Great Balls of Fire. There's a section of an audience who wrote to us who feel really rather passed over. One of them says, Mr. Squires from Swindon in Wiltshire, why can't there be a Janet Street porter for the over 60s? I mean, I put it down as a foot. If it could just either rotate or move a foot further towards the audience. The roster goes straight through the backing. Does it? In yeah, our lines. Right. Um, Think it's big enough? I think it's marvellous. Mind you, it has to be big. We've got a lot of items to get into it. Yeah. It's very good. Beautiful. Radio Times gives you a better picture. At 12.15 tonight, a gang of con artists indulge in a spot of framing of Spencer for Hire, starring Robert Urich. We've international golf in half an hour from the Volvo Masters at Soto Grande. But first, in a change to our published program, highlights of tonight's football action in Belgium in European sports scene.
very good evening to you from the Royal FC Liège Stadium, uh, where Hibs, backed by a support, I would say something in the region of two, two and a half thousand people, are facing an enormous barrier in the shape of uh, this very famous Belgian club. The Liège team show only one change from the side which played at Easter Road, and that is that uh, Niskins is in at number 10 in place of Jean-Marc Bossman. A very powerful team, and Vargas in particular has to be watched, the partisan Belgrade player, 29 years of age, and uh, obviously very, very powerful in the shape of Luke Ernes, who showed his great dynamic running at Easter Road. Hibs have only one change, and that is not surprisingly. Neil Orr has come in. He'll play from the start in place of Mickey Weir, who was um, the starter at kickoff at Easter Road on a perfect evening for football. And the referee tonight is from Spain, Senor Asbita. Well, you can hear in the background that sizable Hibs support, about two, two and a half thousand supporters. And I'm quite sure they're going to see typical Belgian football tonight. They're playing at home, but home or abroad, the Belgians are the masters of counter-attack. That is the basis of the whole footballing philosophy. And I think basically that is what we'll see tonight again. Alec Miller looking slightly tense and probably a bit groggy about what's been happening in Scottish domestic football over the past two weeks. Well, the Hibs supporters might be outnumbered in something like a 20,000 crowd, but then in no way diminished vocally, out shouting and out singing the local support. John Collins. Neil Cooper. And Hibs tonight know they will have to sweat and toil for the full 90 minutes. Scoring draw that would do them very nicely indeed. Oh, that's a free kick. And a bladed one, too. Now, the Belgians didn't like the pace of Evans in the first game. And indeed, I'm surprised he got so much latitude for that break. Ball there by Paul Kane. Hutchins up. Couldn't have been very far away from that. Collins again. Nice enterprising start by Hibbs. As I say, they've got to watch the counter-attacks. And there by Neil Law, almost a gift. Put the way by Hunter. There's Evans going in. For the second time, getting in behind that defence, Hutchin. He's really got a lead fly. Alan Stedden. the back of the head and Cooper gently down remember the day of seeing Neil Cooper down at Lily's Hall when he had a very serious injury indeed was fighting his way back alongside Terry Butcher and good to see him at this level again now picked up by Boffer Oh, that's a very good ball straight through to Huber. Up there is Vegria. That's the outside of the foot. Dangerous looking ball that. Houchin having to come back. Still hear them in the background. Must be heartening for a side, particularly Hibs having done so poorly over the past uh, couple of weeks in Scottish football, having such a sizable and voluble support come all this way. That's straight to Desa. And I want to see better football than that. Oh, 
was Varga, the Yugoslavian, coming all the way back from that. Vegria, there he is again. That's a better tackle. Collins. Belgians beginning to slide in rather late in the tackle. Evans has already suffered. Collins, I thought, was going to suffer there. There's Collins. Ouch, and needs a ton. Well, you ought to have laid that off. Evans, good play. This is Collins. Punching. Well, it shows you what the big fella can do, given half a chance. I mean, he was covered. There were defenders there to look after him, and yet he contrived to get up. Good timing, that, and the defender had actually drifted away from him. It shows you the angle we watched initially was foreshortened. Ouchin just missing out there, whipped away by Gusto. Oh, a lucky break there for Ernest. That's late. Indication there by Neil Cooper, there was a slight dive. Well, they get the bugle out when they're in a situation like this. Kuben is going back, but Boffin is there, and Boffin takes the shot! Great strike. I mentioned his left-footed uh, shot at Easter Road, one of the best shots in the night. That was almost a replica of it, and a brilliant save. Andy Gorham at his very best, and he'll need to be on it tonight. He's shooting like that. Well, so far, so good for Alec Miller. Nice little turn there by Huben. He's got the shot on, can't come. And that's a corner, and Hibbs looks slightly fragile there. Final shot there by Niskins. There he is. About 28 minutes gone, there's a captain. He's already played an enormous part in this game and acts out safely to Orr. Good understanding there. That's a clever ball. Hamilton. Mitchell had come forward. Ouch, and again, trying to get a little touch, and Collins wasn't all that far away. Oh, that was endless. Mitchell, now Collins. Eventually, the interception came. That was very slight play by Luke Ennis. Giving the ball away in a dangerous position to Hibbs. Collins getting it to that left side of his. Who's coming out at the back? Hamilton. Well, that was excellent play by Hibbs there. Collins, I think, is having one of the best games I've seen in a long time from him. Nice touch on there by Ruben. Vargas, a lot of skill. Martin Ferguson just tucked in there by the side. Alec Miller, Ernest with a very good ball. Another weak cross. This is Boffa. Oh, he's got a finger to it. Yes. Well, perhaps more than just one finger. Let us see. Oh, a distinct punch over there. And another good save. That's Boffa. Now, it's getting out of the fence a bit more constructively than they've been doing. That's the major Hibbs problem, clearing the lines, but not getting it going to do this time. Neil Orr. Oh. 
Hudson again. That's a free kick, yes. Been a lot of that. Mitchell going down. I'm sure there'll be some stoppage time. John Collins to take this. It's not a bad ball. Houchin. Solid effort. Kane coming in from the back. Well, this is how he put the Belgian on his back. Crack. Collins with it. Hamilton, oh, he lost that far too easily. Good referee indicating to his linesman that he's going to blow shortly. And there it goes, the halftime whistle, no scoring. Well, it started extremely well. I think if we singled out their moves against Liège, it would certainly be that Houchin header. He got a bit more freedom than I thought from the first angle. And I think maybe he could have angled it away further from the goalkeeper. And then that uh, Kane shot near the end, which Polak's uh, Danny Boffa. But surely the hero has been Andy Gorham. And his handling of the ball, magnificent. His instinctive reflexive saves are, are so typical of him. I'm sure Andy Roxburgh is gratified to see saves like that. As both sides come off, and the score, of course, nothing each. Still nothing each over the two legs. And we're in for a very uh, interesting, and hopefully, from Hibbs, more dynamic second half. Well, as we start the second half, you might have noticed that Keith Houchin was limping uh, very badly as he went off, and he's been replaced by Pat McGinley. He'll be playing away on the left. That's the way he lined up anyway. That's a bit of a blow to Hibbs because uh, they did not like the big man in the air. So they really are up against it at the moment. Well, I must say the referee, Senor Asbi Tar, has been extremely lenient. See, that would just put anywhere. Big fellow, Ernest. And Andy Gorham has played very confidently and realized the danger that exists when this man gets a ball. Snedden. And they played it dangerously now. Collins. Evans. Too fine with that touch. But it goes, no offside. Back to Snedden. Well, no venom in that. Kane might just get the corner. Does indeed much to the disgust of Buffer. John Collins coming all the way to the other side. Now, this is where they will miss Houchin. Or Collins. Yes, or, and that is a gift. Munarong. Well, the Hibs have been given some gifts at the moment. There's Evans. Little bit of encouragement to the Hibs support. Watch very carefully. 
of central defense. He's been very solid tonight. Nicely laid off. Hamilton just missing out in that. Wow, look at that. Terrible marking. Giving Ernest all that freedom. That's a goal. No, brilliant save. Terrible lapse by Hems. Look at all that. Now watch this. It looked as if he was picking his spot in the net. <laughs> Too straight. And Andy Gorham once again saving the jerseys. Keeping very solid. Indirect free kick. From there, I don't suppose it matters all that much. Well, seems to me the Belgian player did all the pushing and the shoving there. He really worked for that free kick. They can be very, very good. They excel at these set positions. Captains there, they start. Watch Bofin. Bofin again. That left foot shot of his. They saw and Andy Gorham knuckling that away. And that is almost a touch. That was Niskins and. Uh, Niskins is very good at seeing that space that he can get into, but I think he tended to be falling back just as he went for it. Cooper. Oh, run the shot there. Collins coming back. Cooper, wanting players to come towards him. Collins. Watch well, very good tackle. He's, yeah, he's been caught much more often now. We've got to play it safe. McGinley. Nice little run by McGinley. They saw getting it away. Did that with ease, and uh, Hibbs haven't been doing that enough, quite frankly, in the second half. So, John Collins. Well away by Abran. Collins trying to get it to that left foot of his. Hamilton. Well, that's a very good ball indeed. Excellent save by Munaron. Now, was he trying to chip the goalkeeper or simply send it to the far post? Up it went and it deceived. Whatever he had in mind, it almost deceived Munaron. Not too happy with the way they clear their lines, and that was given away by Oh, Now, this is where they can be very dangerous. And that's a very good interception. Or redeeming himself there. Alec Miller, who gets very, very hoarse during football matches. Evans. Kane. Evans trying that little turn of his again. Usually very deceptive. Hamilton goes in, tries a one-two. There's a shot. It's just passed by McCall McGinley.
Great effort by the young sub. They really were panicking. Now let's see just how close it was. Evans picked off that time by Desar. He's looking Lee. Chasing in after that. Sneddon. Arnie Law. Hamilton. Ball still in play. He's got to go back and be safe. Six minutes remaining. Oh, here's Evans. There's a shot. Oh. That was very well struck. It was a difficult angle. Now, the two players approaching him could have put him off. All the way. Bizarre goes with it. Ball fair. And there it goes. The end of 90 minutes. And so these uh, two teams have played 180 minutes of football. And we are still to see a goal. And we now go into extra time 15 minutes each way Liège starting extra time and one of the great factors now will be fitness straightforward uh, comparison between the fitness of the continental player and the Scot Genley John Collins is McGinley, who I think might have been in an offside position. And it goes there to Zaga. Still a tricky player, and Orr fills in. Fitness and concentration. These are two of the most important factors now. Preparing for that long throw-in, and a very weak one. Oh, Durham doing well. I talked about concentration, and he's showing the example. Poor header out, by the way, by Hamilton. He's got length this time. Overhead, though. Oops. Bernard Vegria. Oh, beautifully turned inside by the sub Malbasa round his man and it's just away oh. what a great opportunity for Barga well I think Miller must have warned his men about the counter attack and opening themselves up and that almost came that time it was Varga going wide with it it's a very narrow angle indeed and a great clearance, Cooper. Kane Hemden. Not this time. Works a nice little ball forward. 
Well read all the same, and the corner kick. Ruben taking this. The header in, swept away. Oh, what a goal! Oh. Unbelievable! The captain, Desa, right out of the blue. Even a high-quality goalkeeper like Andy Gorham couldn't save this. Look at it, whistling in. Underside of the bar, into the net, and out again. A superlative shot. one nothing, and what a tragedy for Hibbs. One thought they might uh, even have been playing successfully towards a penalty finish. Just on the verge of the half-time whistle in extra time. That's the score. Well, no wonder they're celebrating that. That was a, a spectacular goal by any standards. Well, that should certainly inspire the Belgians. There it goes. The first half of extra time is over. And somehow or other, Hibs have got to pull themselves up. Well, Hibs, as I say, have got to really lift themselves now. Dramatic goal. They've still got to defend well. And this has got uh, more and more powerful as the game has gone on. They're still trying to play a bit of football, though. That's a free kick. A pretty brisk tackle it was as well. Fellinger going down. Well, Hibbs would do us all a favor if they scored a goal and silenced that racket in the background, apart from anything else. Belgians are enjoying themselves now. They think the tie is won. That's a nice touch to the outside. Well, is it offside? It is. <laughs> Again, he suddenly buried it, but he was given offside long before he put it in. Winning the end of this tie. A lot of tired legs now. Oh, wide open, and Andy Gorham. Great clearance. Nicholas Kane. And Fellinger. Goal kick. They're anticipating the final whistle and displays of triumph.
Belgian crowd beginning to whistle for time up. Here's all. Now Hamilton. Kane. Goalkeeper challenges. And that goes loose. Great final effort by Hibsier. Still not cleared cleanly. And they get it away at last. Fighting all the way, Hebs. Andy Gore not wasting time, getting it right forward. They're putting it anywhere now. Hebs have not yet surrendered. Oh, there was no drive in that one, though. Needed more loft. The crowd whistling, whistling away. Piercing the night. So near the final whistle. Hibs haven't folded. Kane. And Hibs get the corner. Expecting to leave that to Collins to come up to take. And he's got the strength to come across. Wasting time. But in it goes. And beyond the everybody. Oh dear, what a wasted, wasted ball. Tired looking pass. Referee looking at his watch. He should surely allow some stoppage time. Slightly fortunate to get away with that. One against one. Hibs have to commit themselves. And that might be that. There it goes. The final whistle. Jubilation amongst the Belgian officials. If Hibs are disheartened, as I'm sure they are, then surely they must also consider that any side would have been beaten by a goal like that. Nevertheless, they fought hard and their supporters have done, with the team on the field, have done Scotland proud. And if the crowd are appreciating their own side, the Hibs support, way on the far side, applauding Hibs. There they are, tired, weary, disconsolate. But they've taken at least the satisfaction of this team all the way through to extra time. That's the final score. As we say, a very good night from the age. That program replaced the published When I Get to Heaven, which will now be shown at a later date.